Hello everybody, Sam here, engineer, MBA, and investor. And in today's video, I want to talk about this article on Financial Times. This was tweeted out by our great friend here in this channel a year. And uh, he sort of had this little thread here yesterday that was posted. And I thought to myself, I think it's a great idea to go over it, maybe, you know, talk about our thoughts here. And of course, reflect back to a lot of things that we've been seeing in this channel for months and months, if not years. So uh, the, the tweet starts out, this is a great article by Hannah of Financial Times, giving me interest in overview of the current status of CRISPR sector, scientifically and financially, while focusing on the upcoming FDA approval, potentially FDA approval, of course, for uh, CRISPR Therapeutics uh, first ever genome editing program, which of course that is CTX001 or Hexacell known as today. Second tweet goes, in partnership with Vertex, Smith expects to submit late stage trial data seeking first ever regulatory approval for the genome editing therapy for sickle cell disease and beta thalassemia, both in EU and UK regulators by the end of this year. That's interesting. EU and UK regulators. Oh yeah, I guess UK now because it's out of Brexit, right? Yeah, so you, you have to, you can't just include them in EU, obviously. That's a good point, actually. We never made that distinction i think in this channel but anyways um okay so that's pretty cool that's pretty good uh number three here we're taking a look development raises questions of ethics long-term effects i mean to me you know this this whole topic of ethics i think this is more like you know science fiction to me it's more like same concept as like uh any sort of technology when it's you uh, people have the you know ethics question or moral question right away i mean when the internet came about i guarantee you there were ethics questions about how the you know privacy and invasions of people's homes with technology would come about. Smartphones, same thing. Now that you have a pocket that's literally a GPS for uh, the FBI in the US or in Canada, the RCMP and so on. Um, those organizations can track you. I mean, that's always been ethics questions, but CRISPR is no different. I mean, there is the ethic question of editing any sort of gene for the better of someone to take advantage of some other people, like you're thinking about making more muscles, you're thinking about being taller. But ultimately right now, these programs, these CRISPR therapeutics, for example, companies, types of companies working on their programs, these are not affecting the germline, which means if you edit out a gene for this type of disease, you don't make it so that, you know, your potential child that if you have may not have that uh, genome or better yet have the genomics, gen genetics, to carry that disease, right? You don't affect the germline. So, for example, if I'm if you're being treated for sickle cell disease, there, uh, you know, it'll knock out. It'll, it'll basically knock out that gene, and basically you'll you'll literally get. Um, well, it won't knock out that gene. Actually, it'll increase your HBF percentage. But anyways, the point here is that uh, you'll be treated from sickle cell disease. But let's say you have a child the next year, you know, that child may still have the. Uh, genetics passed on by you, you know, again, we don't affect the germline with this program. So again, I understand these ethics questions, but I think we're far away from that, from there. I mean, I saw some crazy things about people saying, you know, you change your eye color and you, you know, I don't know what people are thinking. You know, they, I, I, don't, I don't think people realize how much effort uh, it is to even make these types of programs, you know, widely available at a reasonable cost for people. I mean, if people want to you know, take CRISPR in the garage, which we've seen in the uh, Netflix documentary there or HBO, wherever it was. If people want to do that. You know, people could do that with guns. People can do that with the internet. People can do that with smartphones. They can, you know, do whatever they want with technology, right? But when you talk about legal ways of doing things, we're way far from that, right? CRISPR scientific success is partly because it can use and adapt technology developed by genome therapy, partly thanks to the explosion of data from researching the human genome. Yeah, absolutely. So obviously lots of things have happened since then. The data that we've gotten since the human genome project in the early part of 2000s, you know, lots of things happened since then. So we'll see where it goes. And of course, the partnership with Pfizer and Beam Therapeutics early part of this year was pretty big. In fact, when we talk about partnership, we're talking, we'll take a look at the other tweet there. Uh, but obviously here, CRISPR lies behind other U.S. biotech sector. Yeah, okay. I mean, this is this is okay. I mean, this you're looking only at like a one year time frame. I mean, this it's a short time frame. I mean, let's let's talk in five ten years, right? Let's let's just talk in five ten years. 
I, I guarantee you this trend will be a lot different for 10 years, right? But with recent clinical advancement, Vertex dosing is first patient. Yeah, sure. Uh, Graphite Bio as well, first patient. I mean, we got data from Caribou as well this year. We got additional data from NTLA 2001. Um, and potentially, we'll have more data from CRISPR to the other programs there, but they have already been posting their data. So amazing set of data that we're getting. And of course, the next year will be no different. We'll be getting a lot more data. 2019 is what we're doing with record years. Okay, yeah, I mean, 2019 was a big year, but 2020 was a bigger year, but I don't necessarily think it was just because of, you know, the CRISPR technology taking off. I think there were a lot of macro environments. Obviously, we talked about the money printing. We talked about different companies in high risky sectors being valued a lot more than they should have been. And that's where we are today. You know, you have these companies down 60, 70, 80, 90 percent. Um, so, I mean, I, I think there were other factors involved, right? That's, that's all I'm saying. In response to CRISPR companies claim genome technology is more precise and commercial than genome therapy. According to CEO Beam Therapeutics and Gene Therapy could not always control where the genome is added and unlock the base added. It. Sure. I mean, I'm not going to argue with that. I mean, I think there's a value there for single stranded breaks versus double stranded breaks. So what CRISPR Cas9, for example, is doing. But ultimately, you know, you're still going to get some scrutiny for even single, single stranded break. Just look at what the FDA is doing right now for Beam 201. Uh, I'm not saying I'm taking FDA sides on this. Absolutely not. If you guys watch my videos, you know exactly what my opinions are on how the FDA is approaching this for, um, for Beam 201. It's completely unfair, completely unreasonable, unacceptable in 2022 that you, you have to give 30 days to give you an official response. And then you give a few months there for the company to assemble their own response. I just think it's a huge delay, huge time waste, a huge effort waster. Uh, we definitely cannot afford those types of delays. There are those types of efforts wasted if we want to go to the next level with biotech, with genomics, in my opinion, anyways. So, and of course, I think the biggest news, and I think we've made this 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 video on this. We 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 I think we beat the hammer there on that one. Uh, this week, you know, that, that uh, they're announcing here that when they, this week it happened, the Bloomberg, they have got the FDA approval and they listed the U.S. price of $2.8 million per uh, drug, which is the single most expensive drug ever, which is crazy. You know, that's a huge price for a technology that's not even using CRISPR. That's, you know, you compare what Bloomberg is doing with any sort of CRISPR technology, whether that's CRISPR-Cas9, CRISPR-Cas12, crispr Five, you know, base editors, prime editors. It's like light years behind, right? It's not even one-time treatment. I mean, it's just pathetic, you know. It, the data is just well below average, I think. And you're charging in 2.8 million. You can bet that these CRISPR companies are gonna charge around that number or even more. I mean, I, I don't see them charging less. Again, am I happy about that for patients? Absolutely not. Um, but that's where insurance and governments have to step in. Uh, we'll see how it plays out. But the point of talking about this is the potential that CRISPR therapeutics can yield from a program like CTS01 or NTLA could yield for 2001 or 2002, or Caribou can yield for CBO10 or Graphite Bio for their program, Verve Therapeutics for Verve 101. So lots of good things coming here, lots of things happening in this space. Amazing thread here by year, reminding us of the article from Financial Times here. I think the article did a good job talking about the CRISPR landscape. Um, and I think they did a good job here talking about the potential of financials here. And of course, we're talking about the US FDA is like the big, big black sheep in the room, the big elephant in the room. Um, but ultimately, I mean, there was someone, I, I remember there was a tweet there, I don't remember when, but a couple of weeks ago, maybe a week ago, there was something saying that, you know, are you afraid? Someone asked me, are you afraid of the, you know, risky landscape that the FDA can just step in and shut down the program, similar to what we've seen with Beam Thermo one right now? And my answer to that is that anything revolutionary in life, anything that, that's, you know, breaking the way people think, the way people see life, the way people see each other, anything that revolutionizes that will have significant, significant barriers, will have significant friction to it. And I think these types of landscapes are extremely risky. But again, these are the places where you can get high rewards for a high risk Potentially, right? And I think it is a high risky place. I mean, genome editing, CRISPR as a whole, it's not proven yet. I mean, you have amazing clinical data, but one thing goes wrong and the whole thing will lag for a couple of years, guys. It will lag for a couple of years. I'm not talking just one or two years, right? So 
There are a lot of risks. That's why I've always mentioned, you know, not financial advice, just information for free, education information for free. And there's a reason why a lot of people don't talk about this technology because it's not mainstream yet, right? So we're in this channel, myself included, we're betting on the fact that we are in the early part of the S-curve and we're well below, well before the mainstream. And once it does hit mainstream, potentially, which we have all reasons to believe it will so far, you know, we'll, we'll reach to a point where this company will be valued a lot more. This CRISPR technology will be used a lot more, will be talked a lot more. So I'm very bullish about it, very excited. I mean, this is Sunday here. I'm thinking about it. I mean, it's not really a beautiful Sunday. It's raining outside, but hopefully wherever you are, it's sunshine and whatnot. Um, so it's a great time to talk about high levels, guys. So hopefully you guys appreciate this video. Do like this video if you find value. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. It really does help this channel, guys. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think about this type of article here from Financial Times talking about the potential of CRISPR. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a beautiful Sunday and beautiful time with your family and friends. Thank you.